up, people? It's your girl, Adiola. First of all, thank you so much for all the greetings on the 500,000 subscribers. We'll still celebrate that soon. But right now, I devex. Ah, and let me start by apologizing that this is going to be a very long video, but we need to talk about this. Have you guys been paying attention to what's happening in Ilori, Kwara State? Oh yeah, the governor appointed some commissioners, including six women. Kudos to him for that. We are very, very happy about that. And don't worry, we'll still come back to that. But the first thing to talk about is the religious crisis going on in the same Kwara state over hijab. Before I go on, you guys know me. When Christians mess up, I'm the first to call them out on this show. So today I'm calling out Muslims in Ilori. And if anybody wants to say that I'm being biased, that is your own cup of tea. All you need to do is check my resume. But today I just, I devex. I'm still coming to blame the Christians of Ilori as well because you guys waited too long. And you refuse to partake in politics. See your lives. But you know, the fight has been over who owns Christian schools, whether the government has full control over the Christian schools or partial control over the Christian schools just by giving them grants. And I will explain all that later. All we know right now is Christians and Muslims were throwing stones at each other. Muslims were going to Christian schools and breaking the gates by fire by force. They are trying to cut the gate of the, the school, St. Barnabas, St. Sanders College, they are trying to cut it right now. We defend our heritage, we will defend our faith. The Christians were protesting in front of their schools and they were getting beat up. We're not doing anything, we're just dancing and singing. They started throwing stones at us. How do we take him to the hospital? He's bleeding from the head. and priests were ending up at the emergency, the ER. Muslims were going to churches randomly, even churches that don't have any schools. This last Monday, Gunsef, they were burning down church buses, breaking down windows. They even went on the streets of Ilori, dragging Christian passengers out of moving vehicles and beating them up. Ah-ah! Enye Muslimi Ilori, wala itala e se da, e da kun iro kina pa funyi gano. Te wan so kutalu, yo ba egbe, yo ba egbe yin fa, e si inja, e si inja, sugmanta inja funga, e what you will not take, you are doing it to the Christians. So kuta laughing on your yini, while I tell you, you are not busy to sentence. Benny, or a tio see a yini, Tori Momo Gabora Iba yini, any manji jabi. Ben, I am so mad because the whole world is moving forward. People are progressing in science, they are making electric cars, they are coming up with innovations that are changing lives. So la this so that people are developing. You are there in the Lauren fighting over hijab. Ah, Baba, Ojuragba, Miti Funye. You cannot fight for good roads or stable electricity. Ijo namuna yinde, tinu yinru. Eh? You cannot fight for better hospital. You cannot fight to produce something tangible in Ilorin that will put Ilorin on the world map. Eh, beru alone. Because of religion, you will stone your fellow Yoruba. Now, the interesting thing in all of this is the government of Kwara State did not say anything. For one week, the governor and his deputy, Benny, you will not see any statement on their Twitter, their Facebook, or their Instagram pages. Meanwhile, they were busy posting about other things like preparation for farming season in Kwara State, kickstarting the COVID vaccine in Kwara State. I said, ah uh ah, -uh. ha ha, why not go on television or radio to address the people about the crisis while the crisis was going on, as in as soon as it started? So I thought they are probably not the ones handling their social media pages. So let me call them that. I called the governor at first, he did not pick up. So I called the chief press secretary. I said to Asalam He kept telling me that he did not know the answer to most of my questions. Ha ha, Hey, say that. Because I know that you know the answers to these questions. So the good thing is the governor called me back on Monday and I'm grateful for his time. He said a lot of reasonable things that I'm coming back to. But my first beef with Mr. Governor is the way he handled the crisis. He said that he had been talking to religious leaders behind the scenes as well as the vice president or but I said, why not address the public so 
that they will know that anybody that throws stones should be arrested. So why not address the public on TV during the heat of the attack? He promised that he would do that the following day and he did. And that was the first time that he addressed the situation publicly. That was on Tuesday. That was the day after we talked and on his uh, Twitter page. Now, I'm also surprised that he used that as an opportunity to also announce commissioners that same Tuesday when the issue of religious crisis had not been settled. My father, Asalam alaikum it's like you're trying to divert attention from the crisis. Was anybody arrested for all the damages that was done? Who is going to repair all the damaged churches? Or are you a you All the people that were injured. Is anybody taking care of them? Congratulations to the new commissioners in Kuala State. We are very, very happy for all of them. For you, I believe the appointment shows that the governor is really trying to change what the previous government has been doing, especially by appointing six women. But Mr. Governor, you are not proactive about something that is very dear to your Christian followers. Him not saying anything for days tells the Christians that he's in support of what is happening, even though he says he's not. At the same time, he says the Muslims are blaming him because some days after the attack started, he sent soldiers and police to guide some of these Christian schools. So he said the, the Muslims are blaming him, saying that he's siding with the Christians. Now, let me tell you the genesis of this problem. As of 1972, there were 78 secondary schools in all of Kwara State, and only three were owned directly by the government at the time. The remaining were owned by voluntary agencies, communities, private institutions, churches especially, and mosques. Churches owned the most schools at that time and those schools were doing really, really well. So much so that instead of the government to decide to build new schools, they called all these uh, churches and mosques. They said that they wanted to partner with their existing schools to establish a common curriculum and to ensure fair teaching opportunities. Now, this did not just happen in Kwara State. It happened in so many states in Nigeria. There are some schools that were taken and they even changed the names at the time. In 1972, the military governor of Kwara State at that time was Colonel D.L. Bamgoye, who was a Christian and a woman a man from Umara in Kwara State. He launched the Kwara State School Board and he gave a speech on why the government wanted to have more control over the schools, mainly to promote equality and to ensure quality education across all the schools. He said uh, several things to promote job security for all teachers, to improve as well as unify service conditions of teachers in all voluntary institutions to ensure uniformly high standard between government and voluntary agency institutions and to ensure adequate staffing for all schools. He listed at least five reasons why they wanted to partner with the schools. We have the full speech that he gave that day, but we will read everything. But according to Governor Bangboye, the government would take over the administration of the teachers. They would decide the teachers that would be hired and promoted at each school so that every local government can be represented when it comes to staffing. Both religions can be represented in exchange for a grant to pay the salaries of the teachers. So the government said that they will be paying the teachers' salaries and pensions so long as the government gets to decide who teaches at which school and the promotions. That's why the schools were now referred to as grant-aided schools, not public schools. They were referred to at that time as grant-aided schools. Do you know at that time there were rumors that the government wanted to take over the schools in Kwara State fully? And the governor addressed that that day. He said no. And I'm quoting from what he said, my government has not yet decided to take over secondary schools. What will now be taken over is the staff management in grant-aided post-primary institutions and not the institutions themselves. I want to remind the voluntary agencies that they are still the owner of the schools. And then he listed the rights of the owners of the school. He said, number one, that the proprietors still retain the greatest of proprietary rights, that the names of the schools remain as given by proprietors that religious orientation and practices in the schools should remain on the stop. He also said that the right to nominate Board of Governors with responsibility for the day-to-day -day management and welfare of the institution remains unchanged. Also, he said that the total tone of the institution remains the responsibility of the Board of Governors as the main organ of the proprietors. Now, this is where the problem is, and this is where I wish that Muslims would also pay attention. The problem now is, when I spoke with the current governor of Kuala State, he he said that what Bamiboye said on that day in his speech is different from the document that he signed in 1974, two years after when the law went into effect. Now, according to the current governor, he said that when the document was signed into law in 1974, that the government decided to take over the schools completely, not partially. And I said, there is no way, sir, that the Christians would have agreed to that. And he said to me that I should remember that that was a military regime. So Christians were not necessarily there to sign with him. It was 
doesn't like a democratic government, the governor at that time just said, this is the law. Okay. There are only two possibilities here. Either Bamgoye deceived the churches or somebody else changed the agreement that was signed after Bamgoye was no longer in office. Those are the two possibilities. The interesting thing is churches in Kwara State were not told of this change in what was signed versus what was said. Do you know when the churches were told about this change? The Christians are saying it was only last week oh, that the government is telling them that what was signed is different from what was said in 1972. That is what the Christians are saying. So this all this time the churches have been operating based on the speech. It is now 2021 that you are now telling them that there is a law and it's different from what was signed. The devil is a liar. As a matter of fact, I have asked the governor to send me a copy of what was signed in 1974. He said he would. Your Excellency, I'm still waiting. I'm very sure that he must have forgotten because he has sent me so many other things. I contacted the pastors. I said, do you have a copy of this law that was signed? They said, no. Everybody has seen the copy of the speech. It is circulating everywhere. But nobody has seen the copy of the law that was signed. The moment his excellency sends it, I will post it. But till now, nobody has seen a copy of this law that they said is different from the speech that was given in 1972. So I actually disagree with the statement by the governor. And this is why I disagree. First of all, Bangwe was a Christian. I'm not sure why he would now announce that churches would still own the schools and then sign something else in 1974. Maybe he did, I don't know. But as a Christian, there's no way he wouldn't be biased towards his religion because he was a Christian. Unfortunately, Bamboye is now dead. He's not here to explain. Second of all, I find it very interesting that the Christians or the churches in Loring were not told about this change in what was signed until recently. And number three, since 1974, the Christians have been renovating their schools. I mean, take a look at this video from CNS College in Loring. They literally have the names of all the donors of each building written on the buildings. Some of them were built by popular church members, popular CNS members, some of them by old students. Not one single building on that campus was built by the Kwara State government. And you know, it's not just the CNS campus. I spoke with Equa representatives. They told me the same thing, that their church does all the renovations, the church builds the toilet, and that they have gone by the speech given by the governor in 1972. Nobody told them, don't spend your money, the government has taken over the schools completely. Nobody told them that. I don't know, do Muslims know that the Christians have been spending money on all these schools all these years? And I hope that everybody is also aware that the school fees that the students are paying, although the governor said that it's not like school fees like that, like that, that it's like levy. But whatever amount of money that the children have been paying since 1974 that this thing went into effect, I hope everybody knows that it is the government that collects that money. So all the renovations that the churches have been doing all those years is not from the school fees because they don't get to collect it. The government is collecting it. The churches are raising money to build new buildings, to construct toilets, to do renovations and so on and so forth. I hope that the Muslims know that the churches have been spending money on these schools since 1974. Now the interesting thing is when I spoke to the governor, he said that the government is also renovating, which is different from what the churches are telling me. But I'm just telling you what both sides are saying. Anyway, after Governor Bangui left in 1975, Kwara State has had several governors, mostly Muslim governors. The only times that Kwara people have had Christian governors is whenever there's a military takeover in the country. So the military president usually would assign a Christian governor in Kwara State, except for 1983, when Kwara State elected Colinius Olatunji Adebayo. He was the only elected Christian governor in Kwara State since the creation of Kwara State. The problem is a lot of Muslims in Ilori are claiming now that Kwara State is an Islamic state. We want to use this media to call on to ask the governor to, uh, to you know, a proactive measure. We need soldiers. Yes. This is what an Islamic state. Yes. And that's why Islamic, Islamic state, state, we harmonize Islamic ourselves. State. We believe in both religions. But it is not. It is not an Islamic state. In fact, I asked the governor about this. There are more Muslims than Christians in Ilorin City, the capital of Kwara State. That I agree with. The disagreement is on the exact number of Christian versus Muslims in Kwara State. For example, some Muslims are claiming that they are 90% in Kwara State. Hey, who? Some of them are saying that Muslims are 75%. Christians are saying that that is not true, that Muslims are only about 50% and Christians are 45%. So we spent days so on the 
National Population Commission website to find detailed data from the last census on the population of Christians versus Muslims in Kwara State as a whole, not just in Ilori, because that would have solved a lot of problems. Unfortunately, we were only seeing data from the 70s, the 80s, except for individual research done by people from both religions. So the Muslim researchers were being biased, the Christian researchers were being biased, so we said we cannot use that. But we'll keep looking for the right data so we can tell everybody the exact number of Christians versus Muslims in Kwara State as a whole. But despite having more Muslims than Christians in Ilori as a city, there are so many mega churches in Ilori. It's not as if Christians are nowhere to be found. From big Equa church buildings to Baptist, Living Faith, CAC, Koza, the founder of Koza is from Kwara State, but I the founder of Living Faith, that is Bishop Oyedepo, is from Omwano in Kwara State. So it's not as if everybody in Ilori is Muslim, as some people are painting it. And according to the Nigerian constitution, every religion is respected, not just the Muslim religion. Now the problem is, over the years, as Kwara has had mostly Muslim governors, Christians have been marginalized. And that is why my biggest problem with the Christians in Kwara State is they waited too long to start speaking out. So many Yoruba kings in the cities around Elorin, the towns around Elorin, so many of the Yoruba kings are being forced to remove their crowns and put on Lawani, a turban, because Elorin wants other towns to become caliphates. Almost every government institution in Elorin, the capital, has a mosque built in their compound but no chapel. For example, the media companies owned by the Kwara State government, Radio Kwara has a mosque in their compound, no chapel. Kwara TV has a mosque, no chapel. The fire brigade office has a mosque, no chapel. Only the civil defense office has a chapel and a mosque in their premises. What happened to all the Christian workers at these institutions? Uh -uh. Don't they also pray? I don't understand. In fact, the one that still baffles me till now is their government household. So I asked the press secretary, I said, Alaji, I know that you have a mosque at the government house in Kwara State. Do you also have a church as well in that premises? He said no. Later he sent me a text that they have a chapel, that that is where they organize carol service every year. So I asked the pastor in Ilori, Reverend Maloma, former secretary of Equa IDCC. He's one of the organizers of the carol that the press secretary mentioned. I said, Esa, is there a chapel at the government house? He said no, that it's a lie, that they use a banquet hall which is for multi-purpose whenever they want to hold the carol service. So I asked the press secretary again to please send me the photo of this chapel that he said exists inside the government house. Nothing. The following day I reminded him, no reply. He's yet to send it. I'm sure he just forgot. So whenever he sends it, I will post it. But for now, we are not finding the chapel. So I asked the governor. Now to be fair to the governor, the governor has not moved to the government house. He said that the whole place has been shattered by the previous administration. The government is still living in his own house. So he has not moved into the government house. So I asked the governor and the governor said that there's a small chapel built by Bamboye. You see, that's another reason why I don't know if Bamboye would have changed what he wrote in the agreement versus what he said. This is a man that built the only chapel that they have at the government house if it's still there. Anyway, the governor said that there's a small chapel, but it's not being used. So I don't know, maybe they've converted it into something else. I don't know. But there are Christian workers at the government house, okay? So if they send me the picture of the chapel, I'll share with you guys. And it's not just about building chapel wherever you've built mosque, just to demonstrate that you respect the other popular religion as well. Go to the University of Ilorin, for example. Most of the heads of the various departments at the University of Ilorin are Muslims. Are you, you mean to tell me that only Muslims have the brain? How is that fair? So Christians have been marginalized in Kwara State for so long. And by the time that the Christians are now waking up, not only do they have more Muslim teachers at all these Christian grant-aided schools, the ones that the government said they will be paying the salaries, not only do they have more Muslim teachers, but the ratio of the Muslim to the Christian teachers is outrageous. For example, Equa Primary School in Ojaya has 49 teachers. 43 of them are Muslims. Only six are Christians. Do the math. How is that fair? It's not even up to one quarter. What ratio is that? The reason that the government took over the staffing of the schools was to ensure equal representation. How is that equal? Meanwhile, there are so many Christian graduates that are not getting employed in Kwara State. So they are going to other states to look for teaching jobs. How is that fair? Also, Baptist Primary and Secondary School in Ilorin, they have 78 teachers combined and only 12 of them are Christians. 66 are Muslims. How is that fair? CAC Secondary School has 44 teachers and only 4 of them are Christians. Only 4 out of 40 are And not just that, at the Equa Primary and Secondary School in Ojaya combined, they have 7 IRUK teachers. They call them Malims. And yes, there are more Muslim students at these schools, but how do you explain having 7 
even Malim is teaching at Aruke, and only one C Aruke teacher is teaching at the Equa Primary School, Equa Junior Secondary School, Equa Senior Secondary School. Haba, one C Aruke teacher and seven Malims for I Aruke. How is that fair? I asked the pastors about the ratio of Christian versus Muslims at this school, and they told me that they have more Muslim students at the primary school, but the population at the secondary school is 50-50 when it comes to Christian versus Muslim students. So having one IRUK teacher teaching at the primary school, junior secondary school, senior secondary school, how is that fair? And you have seven malims. And you're alone. Yes, you that. But do you know the funny thing? The same thing does not apply to the Muslim grant-aided schools. Remember, the government was not only interested in Christian schools, they were also interested in Muslim schools. So yes, but they are not applying the same rules to the Muslim grant-aided schools. First of all, the Muslim grant-aided schools don't have any Christian teacher. Not one. Not one. Not only that, they don't have any CRUK teacher. Even though they have Christian students attending these Muslim grant-aided schools. Ansaru Islam in Oloje, Tawid Secondary School in uh, Basin, Ansaru Din School in uh, Taiwoke. There's not a single CRUK teacher at any of these schools. It doesn't even matter if they only have one Christian student. Eh? Because they will say that there are more Muslim students. I understand that. But no CRUK teacher and there are Christian students. And the Christian students are not allowed to gather to fellowship. How is that fair? Can Muslims accept something like that? Can you accept that? Not only that, the Muslim grant-aided schools get to determine their own uniform. And whether you're a Christian or not, Christians are saying that they are being forced to wear hijab at the Muslim grant-aided schools. Although the chief press secretary said that that is not true. I'm just telling you what both sides are saying. So, if Muslims can decide the uniform at their own schools, why can't the churches also decide the uniform at the Christian schools? That is what is messing up my mind. Even the full government-owned schools, like government secondary school, GSS, has a big mosque in their campus, but no chapel. At a government day secondary school in Tanke, the Christian parents gathered money, they contributed money to build a chapel for their children. But Muslim clerics chased them away. Meanwhile, the Muslims were allowed to build a mosque. How is that fair? You know, I asked the governor if he's aware that Christians are being marginalized in Kuala State, and he said yes. But then he said it was from the previous administration, not his administration, that his administration is working on it. Okay, he became governor two years ago. We are still watching him on Plasma TV. And he said that he's planning on hiring 5,000 new teachers very soon and that he will make sure that there is justice this time around. So Kuala people look out for that. The governor said that he's hiring 5,000 new teachers. So the case has been in court now for years. Right now it's at the Supreme Court when the Muslims decided that they want their daughters to start wearing hijab at the Christian grant aided schools. Now the Christians are saying no, that that is not part of their school uniform. So the governor closed down 10 Christian schools because of hijab. And then some weeks after, the governor gave the order that the schools must be reopened and hijab must be allowed and that is how the fight began. My question is, since the 70s, when the grants went into effect, tension has never escalated like this among Christians and Muslims in Ilori. In fact, Kuala State is popularly known as the state of harmony. So what happened and why now? And if what Bamboye signed was different from what he said in 1972, why has the government of Kuala State continued to allow churches to renovate their schools, to construct new buildings all these years, despite that the school fees is going to the government, or even if it's not school fees, whatever levy, whatever amount these kids are paying, it's going to the government. The lands where the schools are built is still in the names of the churches. What do you mean by saying that the government has taken it over completely? But like I said at the beginning, I actually blame the Christians, and I blame them for just one thing. They don't get involved in politics. Benny, you have to get involved in politics. Some Christians say that politics is dirty, it is dangerous. I understand all that. But if you are not part of the decision-making table, if you are not present at the decision-making table, you cannot be favored. This is not something that you can solve by throwing stones or standing in front of your schools to protect the gates. No. I checked out the website of the Kwara State House of Assembly. You can literally count the number of the Christians. On one hand, the deputy speaker is a Christian, the lawmaker from Irak, Bodun, the one from Moro, local government. You can count the Christians on one hand. The rest of them are Muslims. I have nothing against Muslims. But who is suffering now? I know that you are praying, but you need to add action to your prayers. Muslims are also praying, but they are involved in the politics. What you need to do is either join existing parties or form your own party. Another election is coming up. You need somebody that will truly represent your interest as well. As you guys know, the government gave the schools back in some states. They gave them back in Oshuo. They gave back the schools in Benue. In other places as well, well. So, a governor can ensure that you get your schools back if you reach an MOU. But if you don't have 
money to pay pension and you want your staff to have pension, then you need to elect a governor that will be fair to all religions when they are hiring teachers and so on and so forth. The new governor is promising to do that, but you must also be part of the decision making. You have to be at the table. If all the pastors in Ilorin would join politics, how about you guys will make a wave? Twice the Muslims have won in court. Hopefully the Supreme Court will be fair. But who knows? I mean, don't forget that the Chief Justice is the one that would appoint the five judges that will preside over this matter. What if he decides to be biased to his religion? You have to get involved. If you decide to form a new party, Bishop Oyedepo alone can fund that party. In the meantime, no need to be defending your schools when you are getting injured. You don't have to wait until you get killed. Uh -uh, uh -uh, there's no need. The case is in court. The governor has now announced that by fire by force, they must allow hijab at Christian schools. And I just want to know what you guys think. If the Muslim schools, the Muslim grant aided schools are allowed to determine their own school uniform, what they want their children to wear, shouldn't the Christian schools also be allowed to determine what their students would wear? Do you think that the governor was fair or not? Let me know what you guys think. Personally, Esa, I don't think you were fair. I don't think you should tamper with anybody's uniform, especially since the case is still in court. And keep in mind that you were just telling the Christians last week, just last week, that by the way, the law that was signed is different from what was said. Ah, no, no, no. I don't, I don't think that is fair. Let me know what you guys think about this. You guys don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Y'all, it's been real, and I'm keeping it right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you're yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'm watching you on Plasma TV. Press the subscribe button, we pass 500,000. We'll still celebrate that, don't worry. Anyway, until next time, I'm gonna see you all later. Peace out.